is so sweet. Beautiful boy. Hello. <laughs> Went to the vet this morning. That's why we're, we were up very, very early for this little guy, but he had his yearly checkup and the doctor told us that he is perfectly healthy. We're gonna get his blood work back soon and he is the healthiest, happiest little guy. I get him for a little bit longer. I'm so happy because he's getting older um, and we've had him our entire relationship, um, Michael and I, and yeah, every year I get a little, a little sad. Just, yeah, we won't get into it, but I will cry. He was getting his shots and stuff today and they were like checking him and he was just staring at me the whole time and I started getting really teary. <sighs> okay, so I figured we would start a reading vlog for this week. I've been wanting to do this themed one for a while and I, my goal is to read one nonfiction and one fiction. And so yeah, let's see what books we're gonna do. So I think the first book that I'm gonna read um, for this is going to be The Folded Clock by Heidi Julevitz. Um, it's been on my list for a while. It's part of my 23 and 2023 um, books that I'd like to get to. I feel like I'm being a little ambitious trying to read two books this week um, when I'm going to have a really busy week at work. And I'm still reading Funny Weather by Olivia Lang um, as my buddy read because Let's see, reading her childhood diaries, Heidi Julevitz hoped to find in, hoped to find incontroversible proof that she was always destined to be a writer. Instead, they re, quote, revealed me to possess the mind of a paranoid tax auditor. Thus was born a desire to try again, to chronicle her daily knife, life. Now as a 40 something woman, wife, mother, and writer, a meditation on time and self, youth and aging, friendship and romance, faith and fate, the Art of Ambition, The Folded Clock explodes the typically confessional diary form with Julevitz's trademark humor, honesty, and searing intelligence. Sounds great. Like, I love reading like the inner workings of someone's um, mind and creative mind. I think this will be a great one to read. So um, the next book I think I'm going to read, this one really called out to me because I kind of knew I wanted to do this vlog at some point or do this themed video. So I did splurge and buy this but it's the forbidden notebook by um alba de Cespedes. this is translated by ann goldstein ann goldstein um translated my brilliant friend um the whole neapolitan quartet she translates all ferrante's work um she translates tons of works in italian basically if she's translated it like you almost always know it's going to be really really good so and there's a ford by jim Lahiri. So I feel like this has a lot of great things going for it based off of what I love and have recently really fallen in love with. But um, this is a reissue. So Alba de Cespedes was alive from 1911 to 1997. So she's a Cuban Italian feminist writer jailed for anti-fascist activities in Italy. Um, her novels were banned. Yeah, so really interesting history. I wanted to find when this reissue was. I looked it up the other day and I completely forgot. I wanna say it was the 1950s, maybe 1952 was the original publication. I'm gonna read the little um, blurb in it or a little part of it. So Valeria never suspected how unhappy she has, has become with the shabby gentil gentility of her bourgeois life until she begins to write down her thoughts and feelings in a little black notebook. In post-World War II Rome, paper is in short supply and she acquires the notebook on a whim, illegally, from the tobacconist down the street. Embarrassed by the unchar uncharacteristically impulsive act, she decides to keep the notebook hidden from her family. This new secret activity leads Valeria to scrutinize herself and her life more closely and she soon realizes that her individuality is being stifled by her devotion and sense of duty toward her husband, daughter, and son. Focus on... Um, a Woman's Interior Life, an utterly modern portrayal of the dynamics of domestic life. I did see that, I believe I read a little like um, article about this in that Elena Ferrante obviously was heavily influenced by this author. Um, they're both Italian writers. Um, obviously, 
Alba came before Ferrante. So there's a lot of influence in her work from this. Um, but I'm really hoping to read both of these at the same time because I think it'll be really interesting to kind of... This one is more of someone purposefully being like, I'm going to document my life and investigate my life and who I am through this act. And this is a, I've obtained this illegally in a really tumultuous time. Sorry, Hero hit that. And in a domestic, traditional domestic setting and seeing how domestic, domesticity is portrayed in this book and also how the diary, it seems in this, it's forbidden for one, but it's also forbidden in the sense that she is going to put herself bare on these pages, that she is going to unravel her inner thoughts and feelings, and they may not be societally what is expected of her or how she should society, like traditionally feel or is expected to feel. So I think it'll have this really interesting interior, sorry, confessional, very deep. I think it's going to, I, I need to read it, but obviously I think it's going to start out where she is just putting her thoughts down just to get them out. And I've noticed that when you do that in a journal, like you get them out, but then you start revealing things to yourself that you maybe didn't realize you were even feeling. Your subconscious starts to come out and it can sometimes be quite disturbing to see on paper and to know that you have those inner feelings. So I think this is going to be a really interesting, but anyway, I hope you have a wonderful Saturday or whenever you're watching this, I hope you had a great cup of coffee this morning and I hope you got to chill out on the couch for a little while. finally finished our puzzle so we can start a new one. It's so pretty. Are you proud of it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> was it fun? Oh, it's, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. A little friend helped. Mm. <laughs> there it is. Oh, okay. Hi everyone. It's two, oh my God, it's Monday. And I wanted to do a quick reading update. Um, I did do some reading yesterday, reading whoops, the Forbidden Notebook and the Folded Clock, which I kind of briefly talked about what each is about um, in the intro. They're very different, obviously, because one is fiction and one's nonfiction. However, this reads somewhat nonfiction. It's like, it definitely feels like there's more of like a story, like it's documentation, but there does feel like there's more of like a narrative, I guess. Um, while this is very much like a, feels kind of brain dumpy, like each entry is very 
like separate from the entry before it. it doesn't which I guess is very much like a diary like it's kind of just like the thoughts of the day this seems to have a bit more I know it's for narrative purposes because it is a novel but it definitely has more of like a narrative flow between the entries her main character Valeria um Kosati she is in her early 40s she's married um happily married and has two children a son and a daughter they're in their like late teens early 20s and they they live at home um this is post world war ii she's talking a lot about how they are nowhere near where they were prior to the war financial wise um that she constantly feels like she's having to pinch they're they're okay and they still have enough to get by and they're not struggling but they will never be where they were comfort wise and being able to have certain things and provide certain things for their children she obtains a notebook illegally um obviously the forbidden notebook uh she goes to see a tobacconist on a sunday and where she lives they are only allowed to sell tobacco on Sundays. They cannot sell any other item that might be in the store, but she sees a black notebook and it reminds her of one she had as a young schoolgirl, and she wants it. So she tells the clerk, like, I want that. And he's like, I cannot sell that to you. And she's like, I, I need it. Like, I need that notebook. Like, she just feels this need. She's like, I know that I want to write things down and this is the thing I need to do it like I want this thing I already see my name in it she says on the front like in the inside cover he says fine I will sell it to you but like hide it in your coat or the officer outside of the store will see it and at first like she is very concerned with someone finding it in the family so she goes to great lengths in hiding it and only writing in it either late at night or finding excuses to come home early from work before like her husband and children and writing secretly and she's constantly paranoid that they will find it or see her writing or catch her writing or locate the diary and read it and kind of ridicule her for it and she at one point brings up one night she's like what if she tells the family what if I did write in a diary like what would you know what would happen if I wrote and they laugh at her and they think it's like a joke and why would a woman in their 40s, a mom and a wife, feel the need to write their feelings down? Like, that's just not what your purpose is, kind of. Um, the daughter has a diary and everyone knows about that. And they're like, that makes sense. She's, you know, a 20-year-old. Of course she has a diary. But you are a mother. You are a woman of a certain age. You do not need to write things down. So she continues to write in the journal. And as I'm only, I would say, like 70 or 80 pages in, but she is still keeping it a secret, but she's very much now very, like, she's becoming annoyed with her role as mother and wife because it is taking away from her freedom to write. And the more she writes, the more she's realizing about herself and her actual desires and where her life has gone. And the things that she thought were making her happy are now things that she is kind of doubting she feels like I have only ever worked. I've only ever been a mom. I've only ever taken care of a husband and I want things for myself. She even says, I want a room of my own where I can go and be left alone. I can never have a moment to be with myself, to be myself. And she's finding it in this diary. And because she's finding it in the diary, she now wants it to not only live inside the pages, to, but to be outside of the pages. She's really questioning things. She's writing arguments and little things that happen within her family she's writing them down and she's questioning like by putting them down like these things that I would maybe have forgotten and not been so concerned about now I'm like putting them somewhere and they cannot be forgotten and they they continue to bother me because I can see them so these things that I didn't care about before now matter so deeply because I'm seeing them written down on a page she asks I wrote it down by writing the smallest things will I begin to understand the meaning of life and do I want to like she's really questioning everything she's questioning her entire existence through this journal it's in it's incredible it's really um the writing is not flowery it's very um straightforward it's very diary-esque like she's not trying to embellish anything she's just writing it down and you can see her in the writing really becoming like resentful and kind of angry and um, unhappy with her situation that she should be happy. Like she's always like, I should be happy with this situation. And she's kind of like annoyed now. Um, 
yeah, so, so far that's where I'm at. I feel like she's just going to continue writing and realizing that she is fed up. Um, so I'm curious to see how that goes. Um, really, really enjoying this. It's really great. Um, definitely reminding me a lot of Ferrante. So we're happy. And then the folded clock. This has no structure whatsoever to it. Everything is just brain dumpy. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm not loving it. It's kind of annoying at times. Um, obviously, I can't judge someone for what they write in their journal or diary, but it just feels like so far I'm about, I'm also like 80 pages into this one. I just feel like every essay is, I don't know, it's just not really hitting right for me. So I'm going to keep reading and see. And if, you know, in another 50 pages, I'm still kind of feeling meh about it. I might set it down for now. Um, it's fine. I have marked a few passages that I'm really, I really liked, but overall it just feels kind of disjointed to me and it's not, it's just not hitting the way I thought it was going to. So yeah. Also, I decided that this vlog is going to be two parts. We're going to do the reading vlog and then we're going to do a separate chatty video of actual books with this theme that I really want to share because there's just not a enough time for all of them. So that's going to be coming out like probably early mid-March. We're gonna work on that, but I will update you again soon. They're both, one's better than the other. They're both very different, but I'm enjoying where we're going. And I'm still reading Funny Weather because that book is amazing. So yeah, do you wanna see Hero? Let's see Hero. Sorry about the bowl. Hero, here he comes. Okay. Good dog. I'm going outside to look at my plants. Do you want to come here? I want to show you the one. This is the... Oh. Our yard needs a lot of work. <laughs> okay, we'll get it. Oh, wow, they're all up there. Okay, yeah. hang on. I'm going to turn this around. Whoop. I feel like there we go. Ooh, there we go. Ooh, it's windy. So here's my little fig tree. I've had it for almost four years. I got it at Whole Foods and it was like, I don't know, it was tiny when I got it and it's gotten really big. I've never gotten a fig off of it and I'm kind of okay with that because every year it gives me these really beautiful leaves. And this is like the fullest it's been. I actually started growing in late January, I think. So really early. I planted this on this pot because I wanted to cover up this uh, fence last year and it's finally putting out tons of blooms. It's taken, or buds, it's taken a really long time, but it's this really beautiful tropical plant. These really lovely little tubes. So yeah, these will all bloom eventually. Okay, now we're gonna go up front her yard needs so much work. I just, you give up in the winter here because you really don't know what's gonna happen and you can't handle freezes. So, let's see. These are my beautiful roses. I love them so much. I never um, cut them to put in a vase just because they're like these tiny little roses. But I'm wondering if I should this year. Hang on. Roses. Do you ever um, cut them and put them in water or do you just let them do their thing and die and let them come back when they want? I trimmed these after our last freeze and I think that was a really good choice because they are extremely green and happy and they smell really beautiful. And they're just, they're so pretty. I love them. The rest of my art looks like garbage. I'm gonna work on that in the next couple weeks now that I think the threat of all freezes are gone. But yes, they're beautiful. One of my pink roses um, is blooming. So we're going to go, oh, it's bright. We're gonna go look at it. And a bunch of other stuff opened up. So let's go look at my pink roses. It rained a little today, I guess, but look at her. Okay. She's the most beautiful. I love her, oh my God. Hi, hello.
I thought I would film this really fast before I start um, making dinner, but I decided to stop reading. I DNF'd um, The Folded Clock. And I'm kind of bummed to be part of my um, 23 books in 2023. And I just felt like I was slogging through it. I feel like it's one of those books that you should pick up and read not necessarily in order or if you do just like go read one uh, diary entry a week or pick it up at random and open it. I feel like reading it straight through just felt a bit, I don't know, it just wasn't really working. I feel like I was trying to read it straight through and it's really maybe not meant for that. Um, I just wasn't reaching for it. So I decided I'm just gonna DNF it. I'm really trying to be better about if I'm just not picking something up or not enjoying it, just being like, it's not the right time for it. But I have read a little bit more of um, The Forbidden Notebook. I'm not, I'm like maybe halfway through. I'm, I've been moving a little slow only because this week's been really busy with work, but I should have some more time um, in the next couple of days to read. I'm really, really enjoying this. Um, the more that we spend time with our narrator, Valeria, the more secretive she is becoming, but she's now about keeping her journal um, private and her family not finding out about it and her putting her inner thoughts in it. But now she's becoming even more aware of the things that her own family members kind of keep to themselves, just like anybody in a family. Like we all have our things that we keep from other people in our family and she's kind of getting really bothered by this and she's trying to find out what everyone's kind of inner life is in a way. Um, her daughter is working and is seems to be being courted by an older man and she's not really telling her mother very many things. The son wants to move away to Argentina for work and get engaged and she wants to be like super involved in all of these things that are going on and her family is not really letting her and she's it's really interesting to see her divulging so much in a journal and keeping things so secret from her family and yet she is now because she and she even like is very aware of it like because she's digging um so deeply into herself she now is seeing things in her family that now in her real life she's wanting to really immerse and dissect and understand um and be a part of so that's been really interesting to see like her evolution of just being like the caretaker, the mother, and now wanting to find out more. And frustration uh, with all that is still very evident. But yeah, I will do another update of this. I'm hoping I can finish it um, by the time this vlog goes up. And if not, then we'll get an update at the end of the month. Okay, make dinner now. Bye. Hey everyone, it's Friday. Um, I figured I would close out this reading vlog. I did, I did finish reading The Forbidden Notebook and I really, really enjoyed it. I feel like it started off really, really strong. We kind of hit, it's, it's a decent length book. It's almost 300 pages. So I feel like of course it's gonna probably reach a point where it kind of hits a lull. Um, we're kind of repeating some things, but then the um, latter, I guess, part of the book really, kind of exploded. So the beginning is very much like her attaining the notebook, the experience of writing um, herself in the notebook, discovering parts of herself that she's had hidden away for a really long time, and then things just kind of start to unravel in her. her. She notices more things about her family that she never noticed before, like she's much more aware since writing in the notebook, and then the ending. There's like a statement made, and I feel like by saying this I'm not spoiling anything, but basically she says that every woman has their black notebook and at some point they they must destroy it. And there's so many things to dig into that. And it's so, it was just such a great sentence to like tie this whole book together. I really, really enjoyed it. It's, you can really tell where Ferrante was, got her influence from. And yeah, this author's great. I really hope that more of her works are translated into English and shared because um, a lot of them are banned and they're slowly starting to make like a resurgence from the little bit of reading and research that I did. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. So this was great. I highly, highly recommend it. We're in the car and I just remembered something that I wanted to include 
in my little wrap up, but basically Valeria realizes that through writing in her journal, she's realizing what a interior life she has and all these feelings that she's like abandoned since becoming a mom and a wife. And she's trying to be like, who is Valeria? Who was she before all of this? And as she's writing, she also realizes that everyone has secrets and even her own children and her husband seem to have secrets. And that's like the only way that one can like survive and live in the world is to have an inner world of their own that they can escape to and keep secret from other people. And I just found that really interesting. And anyway, that's all I wanted to say. If you want to chat further about it, I'm happy you leave me a comment, DM me on Instagram. But yeah, I wanted to close out this vlog. Um, I know I promised that we would do like a bookish journal chat and all that, but that's going to be a separate video that I'm going to put out in the first couple weeks of March. And because there's just too much that I wanted to talk about and I realized this vlog would be way too long and my vlogs are already really long to be um, like on their own. And adding more to that would have been just way too much. So that's going to be a separate video and I'm really excited about it. And I hope that you come back to watch that. I'm just going to read this weekend, try and squeeze in some more books before the end of the month, finish up some books that I'm in the middle of. And yeah, if you like this video, please subscribe. That really helps out my channel. And I just really appreciate you being here. If you have any other books along the lines of diaries, journals, fiction, nonfiction, please leave them in the comments. I'm always looking for more to add. I already have a list going for the video I'm doing later, but yeah, if you want to add to that, I would greatly appreciate it. But yeah, thanks for being here. Um, take care of yourself and remember to always be kind and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.